you are the most blessed, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. We read these words in the first chapter of the Gospel of Luke. Yeah. The first words come from a very unlikely source, an angel, an angel of the Most High God. And the second, from an elderly lady who carries the herald of God in her old shriveled womb. First act. A young lady is seated at the loom, weaving the finest of linen for use in the most high temple, the most high God's temple in Jerusalem. She stood apprentice to the linen maker since the age of eight. For four years, she has been learning the trade and has become very good at what she does. The task is meaningful. And she fills her mind with meditation on the scriptures that she heard during the morning offer. This is gentle breeze walking through the window behind her, bringing in the scent of flowers and new mown hay. Before she was able to complete the hem of the cloth coming to form the loom, a stranger appeared at her door. Shadow of the door and his clothes shone white as if washed with cold water. Greetings, he explained. You are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And no Nazarene, she is sure, would ever dare to greet a maiden like that. But as he entered the room, his words grew more bold. Not so, rushing in her like water cascading over the cliff. Okay. Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will give birth to a son. He will be called the Son of the Most High God. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. Your cousin, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. Wave after wave broke over her as she was listening to the angel's words. First confusion and fear, then awe and gratitude, and finally a rush of joy and peace. Her whole being is drenched in light. Then she heard more words, this time cascading from her own lips, not his. I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. The room's empty now, but Mary's peace remains. She felt full and satisfied. And she also knew that she must leave and be with her relative, Elizabeth. And that one beginning at two. The scene changes. We find this woman seated on the flat roof of her Sunday house. Her small hands resting gently, tenderly, around her round belly. Softly probing any hint of movement. We're all still. From her fanny's point on the roof, she notices a figure walking up the pathway and wonders who a visitor might be. She stepped carefully down the stairs and into the house to welcome her guests. But with the young lady's word of greeting, peace to this house. Peace to this house came something that felt like a gale force wind shaking the beams and rafters in the house. Steadying herself, the woman felt suddenly invigorated. Her unborn baby leaped within her womb, and she shouted out a welcoming response. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child that you bear. 
But who am I? Who am I is so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? And as soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. Mary had made this journey all the way from Nazareth to visit Elizabeth. And the same angel who had spoken to Zechariah in the temple had, had wished the secret of the old, whispered the secret of the older woman's pregnancy to the virgin. The virgin who was now a child. And the magnificent song of praise that burst from Mary's lips, which we just read in Canada 3 this morning, during their meeting, may well have been taken shape during that course of 60 mile trek from Nazareth to Jerusalem. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. The two women held each other, their bonds of kinship now so much stronger than what flesh and blood could pull. For Israel's God, the God of Sarah, wife of Abraham, Rebecca, wife of Isaac, Rachel, wife of Elizabeth called Mary blessed. And indeed 
she was. The trust God is to participate in a peace that even adversity had not made away. Mary and Elizabeth both knew they were going to suffer a great deal because of their offspring. Both, however, knew that the word of life would lift them beyond their sufferings and ultimately keep them safe from the mark. Both of these women knew their children were bound together in the divine destiny. Elizabeth was surprised with the blessing of becoming pregnant in her old age. But she was even more surprised that the presence of the virgin with child who came to serve her. God's mercy never ceased to amaze these two women of God. We empty ourselves in order to be filled with God's kindness, with God's grace. This is impossible to learn. Elizabeth needed Mary to help her with the what? And we too need to honor our Lord to serve us, to humble us, to show us how to be truly the daily work of God. Like Elizabeth, if we empty ourselves of the pretensions of greatness, we might be surprised when the same virgin. The same mother of the Lord enters our life. But she helps us already and will continue to assist us on our earthly pilgrimage to the future. Who says, Hail Mary, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Bless you.